Dr. Kanika Harris is next. She is the Director of Maternal Health at the Black Women's Health Imperative. She also serves as the Public Health director of, um, excuse me, uh, the public health expert for the District of Columbia Mayor's Lactation Commission and is a maternal health equity advisor for the entire state of Maryland. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I hope everyone can hear me and see me. Um, really honored to be here and present today. Thank you the, on behalf of the Black Women's Health Imperative. Today, I will pre be presenting on a collaboration with A1, Association of Women's Health Obstetric and Neonatal Nurses, um, on a grant that was formally titled Empowering Women to Obtain Needed Care Implementation and Evaluation Project. And the title of this presentation is Post-Birth Warning Signs and Exploring Concepts of Implicit Bias Among Obstetric Nurses. So this is this work is based on a small part of the grant and a collaboration that BWHI had with A1. So just a quick, uh, next slide, sorry. So just a quick overview of the presentation again, um, just some highlights on black birthing people and mothers in the postpartum period, because I know my colleagues will go into much detail on this. Um, black Women's Health Imperatives Collaborative with A1 um, an introduction to um, A1's post-birth warning signs, which is what this work was built upon. And then I'm gonna talk about the research and the qualitative study that BWHI did and our recommend and recommendations and findings. Next slide, please. So just um, a quick overview. So we know, and I'm sure um, this was highlighted today, that over 60% of deaths occur during the postpartum period and most occur within 42 days after birth. And we know that over 60% of pregnancy related deaths are presentable, preventable. And there are significant gaps and missteps and oversights um, that contribute to these deaths for all mothers, but for black birthing people, racism, discrimination, and distress from medical providers significantly contributes to the deaths during the postpartum period. And we see that, um, and we know that studies illustrate that experiences of racism dating back to childhood, including traumatic birth experience can contribute to um, postpartum mood disorders and postpartum depression. Next slide, please. So just to quickly describe this collaborative, um, we were invited by A1 as a part of the Mark for Mothers grant, along with the National Birth Equity Collaborative, um, to address some content gaps that they had in their post-birth post warning signs program. And they, um, A1 really wanted to highlight the crisis of racism and discrimination in maternal care as a significant contributor to maternal mortality. Um, and so they engaged us and ultimately our expertise and process to develop content specifically around the impact of bias, racism, and disrespectful care for maternal outcomes. Next slide, please. So this is just a quick acknowledgement um, from Merck for Mothers who are, is also sponsoring um, this two-day symposium that basically um, this presentation is um, this presentation is supported by through the Merck for Mothers um, company and that also that everything presented today is the sole responsibility of its authors. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna go um, just to give some background into A1's post-birth warning signs work and also, um, as you see, the, the link is here if you want to go in a little further, a1.org slash postbirth. Next slide, please. So the post-birth warning signs program goals are to raise awareness and educate healthcare providers about key postpartum complications and warning signs, to empower women to know the signs and get care quickly, using a standardized parent education process and to ensure all healthcare providers 
are involved in the education of women birthing persons and families and to ensure all healthcare providers provide respectful care and act promptly on signs and symptoms of complications. Next slide, please. Um, and just to highlight some of the complications addressed in the post-birth warning signs resources, pulmonary em embolisms, cardiac disease, infections, and postpartum depression. Next slide, please. One of the deliverables from this grant, um, for the Merck for Mothers grant that we worked on collaboratively um, was a video, um, Knowledge to Action Care Equity for Black Moms that A1 is really proud of. First, this video was supposed to be a video that was um, centered for patients and consumers and BWHI and um, National Birth Equity Collaborative really highlighted the fact that Black women are working so hard to save our own lives. We are experts. We know this information. We need providers to listen to us. And we need providers to um, really understand our lived experience and what happens when we experience hospital births. So instead of it being um, more patient and consumer facing, we turned it on the provider. And so this video is really about um, the lived experiences of Black mothers um, and nurses educating providers about inequities in birth and post-birth warning signs. Next slide, please. So I'm going to go now into the research that BWHI did specifically for A1 as a part of this grant. Um, understanding implicit bias amongst um, LND and postpartum nurses. Next slide, please. So um, in this work, we had to really think through several issues. Um, one really being that there's not a lot of research that focuses on implicit bias amongst nurses or implicit bias within qualitative work. And so we had to really think about how to do this and frame this research. So one of the things we did was use uh, standpoint theory, um, really wanting to change the hierarchy of knowledge for this research. We know that nurses and healthcare providers are often seen as the experts in terms of knowledge, skills, and evidence-based treatment, and their position and authority is rarely questioned. And because of that, the standards of care and practice, it can be difficult for them to believe or admit that they are providing care that be, could be characterized as racially biased. And also there were just overall gaps, as I mentioned, in terms of patient and healthcare experiences and outcomes um, and methodology that really examines biases amongst nurses that are often overlooked. So what we did is we did a kind of a dual perspective using versus coding, um, which is comparing varied perspectives of mothers and nurses from the same phenomenon of childbirth and postpartum. We also race matched um, the interviews and tried to somewhat age match them. These were in-depth interviews that were done from the dual perspective of 12 black mothers and 12 labor and, and delivery nurses, um, six white nurses and six black nurses. Um, and to get at implicit bias, what we decided to do for this research is um, in our, interviews, we didn't ask any questions about race whatsoever. We just wanted to see how that would naturally come out, if at all. Next slide, please. So in terms of analysis and um, having mother mother's um, information really validate this research, we did open coding, a pot process by which qualitative data is closely examined and organized and assess trends across data. Based on mother's responses, we came up with five open codes and these codes really served as the basis of 11 a priori codes or pre-assigned codes to analyze the nurse's transcripts. And so versus coding again is an analytical method used to compare varied perspectives of the same phenomenon. In this case, again, childbirth and postpartum. Next slide, please. So just to go through some of the descriptors for the mothers that were in the study, the average age was 32, 42% were on Medicaid, 46% had a doula present at birth, 75% were married, 50% had advanced degrees, and 16% had 
um, high school, were high school graduates only. 38% C-section delivery and 30% of the salaries were 50K or less with two dependents. Next slide, please. And for nurses, again, there are six identified, self-identified white nurses and six self-identified black nurses. The age range was 28 to 67. The average age was 40. 82% um, had RN and the remainder had advanced degrees of, in nursing. The average years of nursing practice was nine years. Um, and they were varied in terms of LND versus floating and those who worked in the postpartum. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna now go into the findings of the study. And I would just like to highlight that um, this study is still under review. So the findings and recommendations I can share today are very high level and broad. And we hope to be publishing this soon. Next slide. So the main categories from the mothers and nurses interviews were pain management and general treatment. Again, nothing new that we, that we haven't seen before around not listening to pain, disrespectful care, um, racialized experiences. Remember, we didn't ask any questions about race, but race constantly kept up either in very explicit ways for the mothers um, and for the nurses, it was definitely implicit, um, explicit, and very, I would just say dog whistling, coding language that was used to describe their experience working um, with black mothers versus um, other demographics. And then also health information and communication were themes, and these are high level themes across mothers and nurses. Next slide, please. So I'm just gonna share right now some of the most I would say profound and jarring quotes from the qualitative research. Um, and so this is this quote is from one of the black moms that's 21 years old. I said, no, please stop, no, stop. I said, no, over and over again. I was assaulted against my will. I will give birth at a metro stop before I ever step foot back in that hospital. So a common theme amongst the younger mothers in the study was um, just this overall, they experienced more trauma during birth, either moms that, black moms that felt like um, they looked young or were very young in terms of um, just feeling like they were talked down to, that their ideas about their body were invalid and that they had no autonomy or no knowledge over um, their birth process. Next slide, please. And this is a quote from a white nurse, age 37. The situation that time, I mean, definitely was racial and I definitely judge someone based on, they don't have as much money as you do. They're not as educated as you are, thinking maybe they're not as smart as you are, definitely those judgments. So we ask some questions to the nurses, again, not based on nothing on race, but can you tell me, some of your lowest moments um, in practicing nursing um, and kind of probed in those ways. And so she began to kind of admit ex experiences where she judged um, her patients based on their race and how she felt that um, it was wrong. And the black and white nurses talked a lot about how they are sizing their patients up before they even walk in the room. There's conversations. Um, there's a lot of you know stereotypes and tropes thrown around of, of, about patients before they even walk in the room. And so this is a quote about her admitting this and how it affected the treatment of um, the patient she had and how um, she realized it was wrong and that she um, recognizes that bias and doesn't want to do it anymore. So this is something she admitted herself. Next slide. Um, so very broadly, uh, the recommendations and research that came from, there's many, many more, but I'm just gonna share three that really came from the experiences of the nurses and the black moms. Um, survey tools to better capture and assess experiences of mothers 
and the quality of care of nurses. Um, and this work is now being done and we're so um, excited about that and hope to also contribute in this area. Um, trainings to increase health communication among staff, including in-depth knowledge of racism and structural violence. So this really came from the nurses, um, one white nurse and some of the black nurses specifically talked about, hey, if we have say an implicit bias training, um, it doesn't change the relationships that we have each other with each other as staff. And the black nurses really talked about, they understand implicit bias, they know it, they try and do the best for their patients, but there's internal racism between the staff that they work with. Um, and so they can't go so far if the resident, the white resident is um, not believing them and how they're trying to care for their patient. So there needs to be um, training amongst the staff to understand um, these issues and work better together in order to serve the patients. And black nurses really talked about um, losing autonomy around protecting and caring for their patients. And also to is to better capture the perinatal and postpartum mental distress of black birthing people. Um, many, many of the women in the study, um, the, their traumatic birth experiences were connected. Um, they were not screened for postpartum depression or they just had experiences um, where the Edinburgh scale was not capturing um, postpartum depression. And so I, next slide. I will just stop there in the interest of time. And again, I wanna thank um, the collaborators on this work and um, thank you for the opportunity.